So I will pose uh, one final question. Does embracing diversity necessarily include diversity of thought? If not, how do we as a society decide which opposing viewpoints should be embraced or protected and which should be censored? Mr. D'Souza. I suspect this is where Belairs and I will agree, uh, and that is that um, you can't have a democratic society without free and open democratic debate. This is especially true on the university campus because the university campus is actually insulated from society deliberately to allow it even wider parameters of debate than are permitted in the society at large. And so I find it particularly shocking and disturbing that the more elite the campus in America, very often the narrower the parameters of acceptable debate. This isn't just a, a matter of fighting political correctness or saying the most outrageous thing that comes to your mind. It's being able to have real discussion, even of controversial issues like racism and sexism, to be able to dive into those issues and truly speak your mind. Um, that has not been the case, in, I think, on the American campus for 25 years, and it's a cause on which the left should join the right in stopping that. Yeah, I agree. I think there must be diversity of ideas. That's the essence of what it means to be in a democratic society. You must listen to, um, with the possibility of being changed, opposing views. You have to be open to it, but you don't have to cave into it, and you have to speak openly, too. Participatory democracy is an active, uh, an active process. In fact, democracy, I think of democracy as a verb. Uh, not a noun. I think that we need to be active, and I think all of us need to be active, whatever our perspective. So on that, we agree. I think this idea that political correctness has taken over somehow is a little bit of a fantasy, and I know it's orthodoxy. I know it's orthodoxy. You know, I love Donald Trump the other day. This was perfect. He said, I, I would call Megyn Kelly a bimbo, but that wouldn't be politically correct. Look what he did. He got to call her a bimbo and claim that he was being a rebel for doing it because he wasn't politically correct and then say, I'm not doing it. The fact is that there's a lot more um, d discussion of it than there is um, the enforcement of it. Language should be free. We should talk about things we need to talk about. And that means not just, yes, some controversial things. The controversial things ought to be at the center of it. In colleges, you, you, you talked about the elite universities. The reality is places like Wheaton College, Concordia College, the college you were president of, these are places that enforce orthodoxy and do not allow dissent. They have a, you have to sign a pledge at these places in order to teach there. So the idea that it's Yale and Princeton that are somehow a problem, no. But when, when people at Princeton, for example, say, we want to challenge Woodrow Wilson um, being, you know, the name of the school being Woodrow Wilson or Wilson um, Hall or whatever. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be the cause for people to freak out and say, oh my God, political correctness. Look into Wilson's record and ask yourself, should we or shouldn't we? Should we take down the Confederate flag or shouldn't we take down the Confederate flag? It's history or it's time to change that history. It's time to kind of move on. Seems to me that moving on isn't a bad thing. And having a conversation about Woodrow Wilson's record isn't a bad thing. And to say, we can't talk about Woodrow Wilson because that's politically correct, you progressive idiots. No, I think Woodrow Wilson too is a to be talked about. 